presto, cried Mound Shroud. With a flap, he gave the kite such a kick as made the boys toll like clamorous bells. Hey, no! they cried. The kite shuddered, fell down, hovered ten feet above the dunes, and shook itself like a wild dog ridding itself of fleas. The boys fell safe in golden sand. The kite broke away in a thousand shreds of eyes, fangs, shrieks, roars, elephant trumpetings. The Egyptian tomb mouth sucked them in and Mound Shroud laughing with it. Mr. Mound Shroud, wait! Leaping up, the boys ran to shout into the dark tomb doorway. Then they lifted their gaze and saw where they were. The Valley of the Kings, where huge stone gods loomed above. Dust sifted in a strange downpour of tears from their eyes, tears made of sand and powdered rock. The boys leaned into the shadows. Like a dry river bottom, the corridors led down to deep vaults where lay the linen-wrapped dead. Dust fountains echoed and played in strange courtyards a mile below. The boys ached, listening. The tomb breathed out a sick exhalation of paprika, cinnamon, and powdered camel dung. Somewhere a mummy dreamed, coughed in its sleep, unraveled a bandage, twitched its dusty tongue and turned over for another thousand-year snooze. Mr. Mount Shroud, called Tom Skelton. Chapter 9 And from deep in the dry earth a lost voice whispered, Mount Out of the darkness something rolled, rushed, flapped. A long strip of mummy cloth snapped out into the sunlight. It was as if the very tomb itself had struck out its old dry tongue which lay at their feet. The boys stared. The linen strip was hundreds of yards long and might, if they wished, lead them down, down into the mysterious deeps below the Egyptian earth. Tom Skelton, trembling, put one toe out to touch the yellow linen strip. A wind blew from the tombs, saying, yes. Here I go, said Tom, and... Balancing on the tight rope of linen, he wandered down and vanished in the dark under the burial chambers. <sighs> Whispered the wind coming up from below. All of you, come next and The boys raced down the linen path in darkness. Watch for murder, boys. Murder! The pillars on both sides of the rushing boys flashed to life. Pictures shivered and moved. The golden sun was on every pillar. But it was a sun with arms and legs bound tight with mummy wrappings. Murder! A dark creature struck the sun one dreadful blow. The sun died. Its fires went out. The boys ran blind in darkness. Yeah, thought Tom, running. Sure, I mean, I think. Every night, the sun dies. Going to sleep. I wonder, will it come back? Tomorrow morning, will it still be dead? The boys ran. On new pillars, dead ahead, the sun appeared again, burning out of eclipse. Swell, thought Tom. That's it, sunrise. But just as quickly the sun was murdered again. On each pillar they raced by, the sun died in autumn and was buried in cold winter. Middle of December, thought Tom. I often think the sun'll never come back. Winter will go on forever. This time the sun is really dead. But as the boys slowed at the end of the long corridor, the sun was reborn. Spring arrived with golden horns. Light filled the corridor with pure fire. The strange god stood burning on every wall, his face a grand fire of triumph wrapped in golden ribbons. 
Why, heck, I know who that is, panted Henry Hank. Saw him in a movie once with terrible Egyptian mummies. Osiris, said Tom. <sighs> Hissed Mound Shroud's voice from the deep tombs. Lesson number one about Halloween. Osiris, son of the earth and sky. Killed each night by his brother Darkness. Osiris slain by Autumn. Murdered by his own night blood. So it goes in every country, boys. Each has its death festival. Having to do with seasons. Skulls and bones, boys. Skeletons and ghosts. In Egypt, lads. See the death of Osiris, king of the dead. Gaze long. The boys gazed, for they had come to a vast hole in the underground cavern, and through this hole they could look out at an Egyptian village where, at dusk, food was being placed out in pottery and copper dishes on porches and sills. For the homecoming goes. whispered Mound Shroud somewhere in the shadows. Rows of oil lamps were nailed to house fronts, and the soft smoke from these rose up on the twilight air like wandering spirits. You could almost see the haunts shifting along the cobbled streets. The shadows leaned away from the lost sun in the west and tried to enter the houses, but the warm food, steaming on the porches, kept the shadows circling and stirring. A faint smell of incense and mummy dust wafted up to the boys who looked out upon this ancient Halloween, and the treats being set forth not for wandering boys but homeless ghosts. Hey, whispered all the boys, do not lose your way in the dark. Voices sang in the houses to harps and lutes. Oh, dear sweet dead, come home and welcome here. Lost in the dark, but always dear. Do not wander, do not roam. Dear ones, come home, come home. Smoke curled from the dim lamps, and the shadows stepped up on the porches and, very gently, touched the gifts of food. And in one house they could see an old grandfather mummy being taken out of a closet and put in the place of honor at the head of the table with food set before him, and the members of the family sat down to their evening meal and lifted their glasses and drank to the dead one seated there, all dust and dry silence. Chapter 10 Quick now, come find me. Mount Shroud's voice, laughing, called them on. This way, no, this, this. They ran along the slender ribbon of mummy wrapping deep into the earth. Yes, here I am. They turned a corner and stopped, for the long linen ribbon wound across the tomb floor and up a wall to wrap around the feet of an ancient brown mummy which was propped a tilt in a candlelit niche. Is, stuttered Ralph Bengstrom, dressed in his own mummy costume, is... Is that a real mummy? Yes. Dust sifted from under the golden mask on the mummy's face. Real. Mr. Mountshroud, you? The gold mask fell to clang like a bright bell on the floor. Where the mask had been was a mummy's face, a pool of brown mud crinkled by blasts of sun. One eye was glued shut with spiderweb. The other eye cracked forth tears of dust and a glint of bright blue glass. Is there some boy there dressed like a mummy? Asked the voice, muffled beneath the shroud. Why me, sir? Squeaked Ralph, showing his arms, legs, chest, the medical bandages it had taken him all afternoon to wrap himself up in, mummified. Good, sighed Mount Shroud. Grab the linen strip. Pull. 
Ralph bent, took hold of the ancient mummy bandages, and yanked. The ribbon unraveled up around, up around, to reveal the great ancient reptile nose beak and flaky chin and dry, smiling, dust-powdery mouth of mound shroud. His crossed arms fell loose. Thanks, lad. Free. No fun being wrapped like some old funeral gift for the land of the dead, but— Hist. Quick, boys. Hop in the niches. Stand stiff. Someone's coming. Play mommy's boys. Play dead. The boys leaped to stand, arms folded, eyes shut, breaths held, like a frieze of small mummies cut in the ancient rock. Easy, whispered Mound Shroud. Here comes. A funeral procession. An army of mourners in gold and fine silks bearing small sailing ship toys and copper bowls of food in their hands. And in their midst, a mummy case carried light as sunshine on the shoulders of six men. And behind that, a fresh-wrapped mummy with new paintings on its linen vestments and a small gold mask fitted over the hidden face. See the food, boys, the toys, whispered Mound Shroud. They put toys in the tombs, lads, so the gods will come play, romp, roust about and run children happy to the land of the dead. See the boats, kites, jump ropes, toy knives. But look at the size of that mummy, said Ralph inside his hot linen bandages. It's a twelve-year-old boy in there, like me, and that gold mask on the boy mummy's face. Doesn't it look familiar? Pipkin, cried everyone hoarsely. Shh, hissed Mound Shroud, for the funeral had stopped. The high priests were glancing around through the flickering torch shadows. The boys, high in their niches, squeezed their eyes tight, sucked in their breaths. Not a whisper, said Mound Shroud, a mosquito in Tom's ear. Not a murmur. The harp music began again. The funeral shuffled on. And in the midst of all the gold and toys, the kites of the dead, there was the small twelve-year-old fresh new mummy with a gold mask that looked just exactly like... Pipkin. No, 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 thought Tom. Yes, cried a mouse voice, tiny, lost, wrapped away, kept, trapped, wild. It's me. I'm here, under the mask, under the wrappings, can't move, can't yell, can't fight free. Pipkin, thought Tom. Wait. Can't help it. Trapped, shouted the small wee voice wrapped in picture linens. Follow, meet me, find me at... The voice faded, for the funeral procession had turned a corner in the dark labyrinth and was gone. Follow you where, Pipkin? Tom Skelton jumped down from his niche and yelled into the dark, Meet you where? But at that exact moment, Mound Shroud... Like a chopped tree fell out of his niche. Bang! He struck the floor. Wait, he cautioned Tom, looking up at him with one eye that looked like a spider caught in its own web. We'll save old Pipkin yet. Sly, does it? Slide and creep, boys. Sst. They helped him up and unwound some of his mummy wrappings and tiptoed down the long corridor and turned the corner. Holy cow! whispered Tom. Look, they're putting Pipkin's mummy in the coffin, and the coffin inside the... the... Sarcophagus. Mound Shroud supplied the jawcracker. A coffin in a coffin in a coffin, lad, each larger than the last, all done up in hieroglyphs to tell his life story. Pipkin's life? said all. Or whoever Pipkin was this time around, this year, four thousand years ago. Yeah, whispered Ralph. Look at the pictures on the sides of the coffin. Pipkin one year old. Pipkin five. Pipkin ten and running fast. Pipkin up an apple tree. Pipkin pretending to drown in the lake. Pipkin eating his way through a peach orchard. Wait, what's that? Mound Shroud watched the busy funeral. They're putting furniture in the tomb for him to use in the land of the dead. 
Boats, kites, tops to spin, fresh fruits should Pipkin wake a hundred years from now hungry. He'll be hungry, all right. Good grief, look, they're going out. They're closing the tomb. Mound Shroud had to grab and hold Tom, for he was jumping up and down in agony. Pipkin's still in there, buried. When do we save him? Later. The long night is young. We'll see Pipkin again, never fear. Then... The tomb door slammed shut. The boys yammered and yelled. In the dark they could hear the scrape and slosh of mortar filling the last cracks and seams as the final stones were shoved in place. The mourners went away with their silent harps. Ralph stood in his mummy costume, stunned, watching the last shadows go. Is that why I'm dressed like a mummy? He fingered the bandages. He touched his clay-wrinkled ancient face. Is that what my part of Halloween is all about? All, boy, all, murmured Mound Shroud. The Egyptians, why, they built to last. Ten thousand years they planned for. Tombs, boy, tombs, graves, mummies, bones, death. Death. Death was at the very heart, gizzard, light, soul, and body of their life. Tombs and more tombs with secret passages, so none might be found, so grave robbers could not borrow souls and toys and gold. You are a mummy, boy, because that was how they dressed for eternity. Spun up in a cocoon of threads, they hoped to come forth like lovely butterflies in some far, dear, loving world. Know your cocoon, boy. Touch the strange stuffs. Why? said Ralph the mummy, blinking at the smoky walls and old hieroglyphs. Every day was Halloween to them. Every day, gasped all in admiration. Every day was Halloween for them, too. Mound Shroud pointed. The boys turned. A kind of green, electric storm simmered in the tomb dungeon. The ground shuddered as with an ancient earthquake. Somewhere, a volcano turned over in its sleep, lighting the walls with one fiery shoulder. And on the walls beyond were prehistoric drawings of cavemen long before the Egyptians. Now, said Mound Shroud, lightning struck. Saber-toothed tigers caught the cavemen screaming. Tar pits drowned their bones. They sank wailing. Wait, let's save a few with fire. Mound Shroud blinked. Lightning struck to burn forests. One ape-man, running, seized a burning branch and rammed it in a saber-toothed jaws. The tiger shrieked and fell away. The ape-man, snorting in triumph, tossed the fiery branch into a pile of autumn leaves in his cave. Other men came to hold their hands out to the fire, laughing at the night where the yellow beast-eyes waited, afraid. Sea boys. Mound Shroud's face flickered with the fire. The days of the long cold are done. Because of this one brave, new-thinking man, summer lives in the winter cave. But— said Tom. What's that got to do with Halloween? Do I blast my bones everything? When you and your friends die every day, there's no time